once again. And we're going to go through some more training sessions uh, like previously, but this time I'm going to explain a bit more of the process of that of block coloring and uh, something else which you may be familiar with is called outline drawing with the Pentology app. As you know, the Pentology app is currently available for the, um, let's see, the, the Google Play Store here, which you can get. This is the, uh, you'll see these screenshots here. This is the app on the Google Play Store. Not available in Apple Store yet, but uh, soon, hopefully. And then um, you'll see that the way I draw is just using this phone. So what you're, what I'm demonstrating here is the phone and using your fingers because most people probably do not possess or carry a stylus. I mean, it's a bit awkward in this. You have a Samsung Note where you can pull out this, the miniature stylus. But lately, in the last couple of weeks, I've been using my fingers more and more so, more so, and I found that to be equally effective in making really good drawings, which I wasn't able to do before. It just goes to show how quickly practice makes perfect, you know. Or my, dad, my daughter would say, practice makes progress. That's what she would say. Okay, here is some of the, one of the drawings I did on my other channel, Produce. Which is my, my sort of my personal challenge, channel, but I, I use the Pentology app all the time for drawing here. So you can see this was a finger drawing I did. So on the live session of the other channel, which you can find. And then with the finger drawing, uh, the one I'm going to show you is an outline drawing. And outline drawings are very familiar in the art domain. And outline allows you to do an outline, basically a line drawing. So this is a uh, outline drawing of a uh, that I did of this, I can show you actually, let me show you quickly. So here is the actual image and I was doing the outline and the basis of the outline was for me to use it, use the basis for my actual free freestyle drawing. And you could do this in freehand by following this, copying this which is perfectly fine, but I find the meat of the drawing is the actual, the tones here that you put out, and then I don't want to spend too much time in the outline getting the proportion, everything correct, yeah? And <clears throat> the beauty of trace drawing, as you can see here, this is trace, is that it allows you to draw while you're looking at the reference image, and this outline, I'm going to explain what the outline can, how it improves your drawing skills. Well, firstly, it looks obvious that you need to do this. But remember, when I was drawing this outline, I was always picking out the dark tones here. Can you see it? Can you see my dark outline? It always points to the dark tones. And the dark tones is usually representative of the outline, yeah? Okay, then that gives you this image, which is more, gives the illusion, not the illusion, but the idea that this was a glass with a straw with uh, ice cubes in it and possibly the drink there, yeah? So this is something I'm going to do probably at a later date to make the actual painting for this, maybe freestyle or block coloring. And block, this brings me to the other point of block coloring, which is essentially the way you I draw at first. And the way I do that is I um, 
Let me take this drawing, for example. No, sorry. This was not the one. Let me take this. You can see here, I got the original, and this is the block coloring. So the block coloring involves getting really into the areas at a smaller scale. And that's why I can make these drawings look close to photorealistic and then um, and then use this color picker here to pull out extract the tonal value here and and I had it on black and white as you can see here and here's another important point I'm going to tell you is that tones are easier to understand in the black and white scale yeah but if you if you actually it's given me an idea of to implement in paintology which is tones for colors so having a red color for example and if i'm gonna i'm sorry i'm just gonna do something very quickly use tones so i don't forget use tones for color like black and white be that shit and then I'm going to share it so I just put it on drive save okay so the um, what I meant was the tones in black and white is easy you can see from here the grayscale that uh, the white tones all this grayscale tones are easy to appreciate but when you're in a in a in a colored region there you can see this color palette pops up here and there's a good reason for that you'll find in many other apps this color palette is like a couple of clicks away the problem is that you know <clears throat> tools should be designed and put in a place where it's easily accessible and now and you can see some of the drawings i make are not based around tools not some all of it in fact I use one brush and I continuously select the colors and tones here. Look for the green. You can see here the tones, light, and then it has the green tones going. So what I'm, the note I made a short while ago is this screen, which goes all the way, sorry, which goes all the way down to that gray scale. That should be very interesting. I hope to bring put that implementation in later but for now you want to know that this color palette allows you variations of tone and drawing is all about tones and this is the reason why you can get depth the form shape and drawing in the in the trace mode gets you very highly tuned to the uh, drawing in freehand and these are the skills you need. So if you're a beginner and you, you work, let's say you, you're a beginner and you work and you have this blank canvas here, you know, you're, you're, if you don't have any guidance, techniques or anything, you are, you're, you're starting from zero, you know, you're just going to doodle, play with the brushes, right, and get you play, go to the other apps like Procreate, play with the brushes and continuously do that and develop your skills, right? With the, So you become tool dependent, as I call it, and you're not learning any techniques. And techniques are the fundamental art core skills that are learned in traditional mediums. And that's where the paintology lends itself and the reason why you can make very impressive drawings and it doesn't look like digital at all right if you've if you've looked at any of my drawings does it look digital to you i don't think so and then you can do some interesting freehand drawing like i did this creative drawing then i call it the orb and then i'll show you another one that i did a creative one this, this cat is also done with the, one of the brushes, but that was done in block colouring. 
And then Tom Cruise here. Okay, I don't have it here. It was, it was an interesting one, I did, and a creative one. So creativity is not lost. If you if you listen to beginners and all the other would-be artists who are journeying in the art of drawing, you know, and they're going to tell you, no, nah, you shouldn't use copying, you shouldn't use trace, you should draw from imagination. Yeah, it's all nonsense, right? Can you imagine drawing from imagination without any skill set, right? Well, you have to learn the skills, the drawings, techniques, and there's a lot of techniques. And the, and the reason why I can draw so fast is I've developed these techniques, and this is what paintology is all about, developing techniques, not the use of tools. You go to any Procreate or any art digital app tool, they always, they talk about fundamental as though they know what they're talking about, and then they eventually just turn to the tools. You'll see when I draw, I won't move away from that single brush that I'm using. I'll stick to it, and then I'll show you the techniques. <clears throat> techniques are what takes time to develop. If you want to develop techniques, you want to develop shading techniques, right? And where do the shading comes from? Well, take this example here of Margaret Robbie, done with one single brush, freehand actually. So I did the outline and I drew it in freehand by obviously referring to a reference drawing that was in front of me on another device. So this is, this is shading, this is one brush. That was all it was, just one brush. And it's with my finger and uh, using, and nothing else, no other tools, just the shade brush, this brush. I'll show you this one, no other tools. I mean, if you were using digital, you'd think, oh gosh, you need to uh, draw a circle, draw this side. No, not so. You're going to draw in the traditional <coughs> sense. And that's what this app will teach you, ground you in these skills. And these skills can be transferred to other mediums. The appreciation of tones applies to painting, drawing, in any medium. The appreciation of form proportions applies to any art medium, not just digital. So let's uh, go back and go to our drawing session, which I'm going to show you. It's very important that these two components are really critical to drawing. And that's what I'm going to show you. First of all, we're going to do an outline. And the outline, as I said, is just taking a brush and just simply drawing an outline of the drawing. And I'm going to use the trace mode of drawing. And I'm going to use a line brush. And then I'm going to pick a color. It's going to go and put it in black and white mode because it's easier to pick out the tones. Now you can see the tones, right? And what do I mean by the tones? Well, Look, I'm going to use the color picker and then let's clear the previous palette. And then it's a black tone. Look where the gray scale is here. It's all the way to the top. And let's pick another one. Look, the skin tone there has gone all the way there. And then let's pick another mid tone, like the lips here. Look, it's very close to the right hand side. So these are tones that you can really understand. and if you're going to do an outline, what would you do? I mean, I showed you the outline of that glass. You'd first uh, go around and do the shape, do the eyes, do the nose. Of course, these are prominent features. And then do the shirt, right? And then I can see where the outline needs to go. If I did an outline based on some other factors and not the whole thing, it, would, it wouldn't look real, right? So this is how we always start doing when we first get a pencil and that's what young kids will do when they first start drawing. They'll draw an outline of something but with no real volume or depth because they haven't 
understood the techniques of tones of shading. So what are we going to do? We'll pick, so we'll pick a line tool that's about the right size. Let's go take it to 2% here. Yeah. Okay. So that's the line tool we've got. And then just draw. And when you draw, you will see your hands shaking. You might be doing, like, doing it very slowly because you can see there's an outline there. Right, like that. You might be doing it like that. I hope you've uh, you pulled up, you're using the app as well, you know, so and then while following along with me, look, you might go like this because you're beginning. Right? And then look, yeah. But if you if you were to the to the to if you get better, you'll be doing this sweeping strokes really quick. Right? Really quick, and that's what speeds things up. Look, it's better, isn't it? And that's faster as well. And that's what allows me to draw really quickly. You develop these skills, right? And you develop the the the, the nice outlines, the outlines where it is. And I was showing my daughter this outline example, and uh, she said that when she gets to the eyes, she would actually, even in the outline, fill it in as black. So she would go like this. Right, do the outline, do the outline, but she would still fill this bit in. Right? Let's have a look. That black. So it's it makes sense because what she's saying is I would do that. No more strokes turned in. I would do that. She would do that in order for the eyes, which are the prominent features of the face, to show and give it more weight to the whole drawing, yeah? Let's discard that. Let's go back and open this up again. So, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. Pick up any portrait. You're free to download anything. You can download any portrait or any face, your grandmother, your parents, or your siblings, you know, just take a picture even. Look, you can take a picture, camera picture here, and then it will load it into the trace mode of drawing. Okay, so let's go ahead and draw this rock because we're all familiar with this. If you don't get it, don't use erase, please, for heaven's sakes, don't use erase, just use undo. People think you should turn to the erase tool. You can erase a hundred times. If you, have to, if you need to erase a hundred times, you need to practice more. All right, and then you get really comfortable in the drawing. I know this chin has to be there. There's no other way you have to. You have to draw this chin. Otherwise, what, what gives this rock the feature? Just go quickly at the outline where you think it matters, right? And don't worry about the exact shape. Look, I'm not even at the beginning. I am beginning to worry about the shape, but once I get into it, I'm not too bothered. It becomes naturally to me, yeah? Rotate, zoom, and just, just do the outline how you think it should be. Right, we're gonna go here. And if you wanna if you wanna really get accurate, zoom in a little bit, you know? Zoom in more. This other ear, very easy. Okay, this neck. And that is shirt. Just be really quick. Let's be really quick. 
this outline is a form of drawing, but it's so easy, isn't it? I mean, it doesn't require... People tend to show you, teach you without this form of training using trace. And trust me, some of the greatest artists in the world that you know by have used all techniques to make their improve their skills. I mean, why wouldn't they? They want to be the best in the world. Why wouldn't they use techniques like this? I'm not saying your goal is to be the best in the world, but I'm telling you that since doing this, my skills improve so rapidly, more so than other techniques. And don't forget these lines, right? These strong pronounced lines here. And let's see what that looks Look Now, mo most people would be able to tell that this was the rock, I think, right? And then what we can do now is do what my daughter says, is uh, just put that, remember that little shiny dot there, and just zoom in, just put that in there. All right. The nose here. And then where are the else of the dark bits? Well, we could go here, put that chest mark here. <clears throat> more, you could add more, right? Where else can you put it? How about here, right? The how about his eyebrows? We know his eyebrows can be. And let's see what that looks like, right? And then we did the same thing with the ears. And let's see what that looks like. Better, isn't it? It's such a big improvement. I mean, not a big improvement, but nevertheless an improvement. And now what we can do, since I'm really getting into this is is we could possibly use that to save that okay and then and then you turn to the shade brush and i'm going to show you very quickly this is not an actual drawing from start to finish i'm showing you examples of how to make this portrait from the outline and now we can go select the color picker and select the terms here and then just simply select a brush size like 8% and just simply just keep selecting the turns get those tones and I'll just show you how easy it is to apply the right tones look at how the tones change when I'm getting his forehead is white here look how it changes the tones and look what happens when I use the color picker and select these tones. See how it's dark? It's gone dark. And that's what gives the painting volume. Don't don't use tools. Tools are is going to confine you to tools and you're not going to be able to stretch your imagination. You're going to be always limited by tools develop the techniques that's what you should do develop techniques so here you see how i'm picking out the stones i've still got like eight nine percent brush size right i just want to show you what the shade brush does i'm just picking out notice i'm picking out these two tones here this is fundamental to art it means that you're your acute sense of tones will increase as you do it, as you keep practicing this way, because you're seeing more of the tonal variations there. And that's why I'm able to make photorealistic drawings really easily and a lot faster than using tools, because I'm able to zoom in, 
and focus on the tones and freehand or in trace mode doesn't matter all right there can you see how the tones are coming together here and then you just keep going right. just use your fingers work it in keep it keep it confined all right just work it in all right and then do the same thing here do the same thing and then take that where the tones change and then you can see that dark area that he has here right look at how the how the tones change when I use the color picker right here and then pick another turn that's it and then and then we can go keep going across the face yeah. i wasn't planning to do this i was just going to planning to do the outline but since since i saw the drawing it just came to me down here because i did a previous drawing here as well that the nose is really whiter and then the bulbous region around the nose which pretty much everyone, look at the dark region here. You can put that down and then put down the lighter region and let's see what we have. That, because a little bit of effort made all the difference. And then we can keep on going, going through that. And then here, picking the lighter tones. Remember, you've got to pick the light, the tones and keep it confined. So color picker, again here. So in a way, I'm showing you block coloring, which I was planning to show you with another drawing, which I will do. But let's just finish this really quickly. I mean, I mean, how fast can you draw digitally? That's the question, isn't it? Okay, I'll show you how fast you pick up the speed, right? And then if you're going to do this, right, look at this. You might as well increase the brush to really large size. Well, why do you have to... Confine yourself to a small brush. Look. Really brush. A larger brush. That's all you need. That's all the tools you need. Trust me, that's all the tools you need. And then let's go here. And look. And quickly we have done that drawing. And then go here. And then keep to the larger brush to do the shirt. Because that's a larger area and then color picker and then pick this side and why did i pick this side because the tones might have changed all right and remember i'm at the top half so if you're at the top half of the trace bar you will pick the colors of the reference image which is the rock here but if you're at the, this you will pick the colors of your drawing look i'll show you this will be white here, color picker, white. Oh, see it, white. You see it, white there. Although this is saying not quite done, it's a f something we need to fix anyway. So don't worry about that. But here, here we've picked that color, and it will be the color of the rock here, right? So what have we got here, All right? Have we got any darker colors? Yeah, we have. Not this darker color. Let's put that down. Right. So there you are. And let's go to this. Now, this is the drawing pass. And what I mean by the drawing pass, drawing pass or drawing phases, each drawing step will have these phases of drawing which propels you to go forward the problem is beginners think that going from a from a zero blank canvas to all the way to this drawing requires a single step of a drawing process this that is completely a wrong 
thinking and you should take that out of your head. Remember, it's the drawing process and the drawing process applies equally to beginners and advanced artists. So an advanced artist will, if you look at them, most of them, you'll find them millions on YouTube. You look at them, they go through a process, makes it look so ever so easy, acrylics, watercolor, you name it, makes it look so nice and easy. And then all of a sudden, they've got this beautiful drawing that you're gobsmacked and you don't know how the how they've managed to get there. And you just, you know, in awe of their final painting. But they've, they've refined these techniques that I'm teaching you here, which allowed them to go to that, to that final goal. And these techniques are not easily explained in properly by teachers, I'm sad to say, or teachers. So therefore, this is where the paintology comes in to teach you these techniques. So the drawing process, which I want to explain, are the steps towards going to the final drawing. So here, here is what I'm trying to tell you. If I had not reached this step, which let's say it's step three of the drawing process, I would not be able to go to the next step. Do you see my point? The point is that each step allows you to go to the next step. So here you can say, well, what have I got compared to, let's save this story and pull it up again. Because the uh, there's something I'm going with. I'm going to go discard and then I'm going to go teardrop, pull that up here. Yeah? Oops, I've got that wrong. Let's, let's pull it. So, Oh, something actually happened here. But what I'm saying is, here, so it's something I need to work on. Here, can you see it? Now, what, do you, what, what can you say uh, looking at this third step? This third step means that it, it creates a void. You've covered the head and the ears and did the outline start of, it shows you, well, I'm pretty sure that his section here is not white. So there you are. That defines the next step. And then you could say, I could go on and tell you where I would dress as the next step. And you would not do this if you had not come to this step. I would say, well, I've got the, the, the lightness on his right side, okay. But look here, I can see another area where it needs to be touched this area in this thing. And then you go go beyond that, and then you get to another level, and you say, you know what? I want to define the eyes a bit more. And then you will go and define the eyes with a smaller brush, even a tiny brush like this. You know, this tiny brush will allow you to create effects, like, for example, the beard. Like, for example, a the drone. Look, look, I'm going to show you. Look how quickly. Try and do that in digital and not with tools. Right? Just not going to work. So it gives the effect of a beard. Keep going and just look. All right, it's got a beard, isn't it? It looks like a beard. So there you are. So I want to show you this to get you started. And doesn't require any special learning as such. You have the you have the actual drawing of the original drawing. Something going on here, but we'll fix that. Anyway, so now let's go to the next step of the drawing class that I wanted to go through. Here is one. Here. So we're going to turn 
back to color mode again. So this is something I've sort of used GIMP to create that dispersion. And this is to define block coloring. Maybe you're a bit unsure of how this block coloring works and I'm going to show you how it works. So I'm going to go and do the line brush here and then I'm going to select a size here and I've already shown you how block coloring works and I'm going to show you more clearly how it's a bit like paint by numbers. This art piece could be considered paint by numbers and it has just that it doesn't have the numbers. So if you've done any of the paint by numbers tutorial categories, let me discard that and take it to tutorials, you'll see that they're organized by many categories. Pencil drawing, the implication of pencil drawing is actually it is, there are a lot of pencil drawings that you can follow along to with the videos, yeah, with these icons show that there are videos associated with it. Take, for example, this. Yeah, so this is actually showing you the shading of a portrait. And then if you click on the top right, it will show you the, it will show you how to do the shading, follow along to it. Okay. Yeah, it takes you takes you through the whole process of the drawing, okay? So then you can switch to your canvas and then switch back to the video and switch back, yeah? So you can do that. That's pencil drawing. There's over 600 tutorials. Paint by numbers is, as you've imagined, yeah? Like, for example, this pizza. You can do this one. All right, select the one or two. So yeah, I just want to show you the two, where is two? Can I get two there? Yeah, there it is, All right? And then change the brush size, and then you can eight, and let's pick eight there. So this, again, it's fun, but it's designed, at the real purpose is to help you get better and more comfortable in drawing so you'll be able to create the actual whole drawing like this just like paint by numbers yeah but so if we go back to the to our drawing here i'll show you here <clears throat> the block coloring is a bit more versatile and more powerful than the paint by numbers notice that this could be a paint by numbers tutorial, right? The red could be a one, the pink here could be two, that could black could be three, the blue could be four, and you know, the red could be another color, you know? But in block coloring, you don't need that, and I'll show you why. Because you've got this power, you don't need the numbers. So here I'm gonna show you, select a brush size, select the color picker, and away you go. It's quite big. So we'll take it down for these smaller drawings first. And then that's all you do. Take, take it down. You can go into the details more. Right there. I'm just filling that with that same color. This is, in essence, what block coloring is. Right, no numbers required. It is a much more versatile and more powerful way of drawing color picker in this color than paint by numbers in my opinion, which I showed you. But paint by numbers is also good. If you're beginning, you want to get comfortable with the whole experience of drawing with paintology, right? Here now, here I'm gonna here, there's some edges here that I want to stick to this small brush size that I already have. And then what I can do is I could go through there and then once I've done that, I could take the brush size up. So that's why you're able to draw really quickly. 
look at that large area that we can cover. And then once you get to the edges, you can do that. Let's do the do the eyes. Take it down to two percent, and then block coloring of the eyes. This really helps your drawing strokes. Yeah, no drawing experience required. I mean, this really will rapidly develop, and I'm using my finger as well. Okay, well, let's go for the blue. I don't know if you had blue eyelashes, but but this the picture isn't really designed to make him look like the perfect rock. And there you are. Look, very quickly, how quickly you can draw. And you just go through that very rapidly, and you made a perfectly good drawing. Now you can be launches you into drawing without the complications and digital drawing most many traditional artists make take mistake sorry make the mistake that digital drawing is a lot of learning even i was typing in chat gbt which says that there's a high learning curve involved it's not there is no digital drawing the word drawing has been translated to digital drawing and it's sad because it shouldn't have been because I'm a proficient user of Photoshop but would I draw in the same manner digital work with the Adobe? No, because of my drawing, my true drawing enjoyment comes from traditional which is doing it by hand and most people don't do it by hand because they don't learn the techniques and these are the techniques I'm teaching you. Once you get good at it, you will, trust me, you will be able to draw with such speed that you'll have no idea how you, you had that set of skills. Look, look at that, so fast. You can draw with, the, with tools, you need to do this, do that, pick the right tools. Half the time, um, you're just trying to pick up the right tools to do the job. So, let's see what that looks like. Look, see how rapidly you could create the whole drawing, and in time, you'll be able to produce the final piece. So, there again, there's a recap. Let's save that. Okay, let's exit, save. So what do we have here? Well, let me recap. Well, first of all, the you'll see a great number of drawings in um, that have been done with Paintology, which I've done on the channel, and they're not that difficult. I mean, they look like pretty good in the sense that you're amazed that they were done like that. And then you're probably scratching your head thinking, how, how is that digital? It doesn't look like digital. Because most people understand digital to be like refined corrections used digitally enhanced computer enhanced animated so and that's what it is it turns out if you use a lot of tools and that's the way it'll be but if you're doing it manually like in the traditional sense with paintology it's not like that it looks like working with uh, of traditional artwork like drawing pencil drawing like i've shown you and uh, using your hands and your fingers so i want to show you that drawing on the phone is far easier than you think and it's also very capable you can make really excellent drawings that you wouldn't thought possible using here here is one i did as well let me show you this. This one. This was done with the fingers. This is my canvas. And I was sharing techniques of block coloring and also using some creative touches to do the drawing really rapidly. You know, zooming in and just using the one brush as well. 
no tools, and it looks pretty good, isn't it? And you may say, well, you didn't trace them, and these are naysayers and beginners who have no real hard skills. He says, yeah, okay, I use that, but do you want to, would you care to see some of the other freehand drawings? You'll find many of them in uh, that, because I was able to draw in this, learn my techniques using this tool, that I've been able to improve my freehand drawing skills, you know, to the level that it looks pretty good, you know, to any artist will say, yep, it's got a good set of skills there. But anyway, the point is, what I'm trying to tell you is, this entry level to drawing is far easier to digital on your phone than you like to think, and uh, you have fun ways of drawing using the tutorials many of the tutorials here you'll see and then you'll see some photorealistic drawings i've done freehand to see all these then you've got plenty of information and stuff for you to get on with i do even have a community where you can post your paintings and drawing like this person this took me seriously two hours three hours <laughs> Well, I'm proud that he's used, he or she has actually used, let's see, let me click on that. She used uh, Paintology, isn't it? I'm sure they're becoming inspired. Oh, look, all these new drawings are showing up. Bravo, I would say, yeah. And then, uh, so you can post your community paintings and drawings here. And there's lots of fun you can have. The whole idea of paintology is to get you into drawing. And the reason why, you know, I've been engrossed in this for many, for a few years now, is because I want people to enjoy the the fun of drawing because people are missing out. They, they lose the essence of what drawing is all about, the, the therapeutic benefit that you can have from drawing when you're lost in the moment. And instead of, I see all this social media that people are using, and then, you know, chatting, talking, and spending a lot of time, whereas they could get lost and be creative here when they draw and they're on their phone. And this hopefully will give them some, give you some incentive for you to find another avenue of creativity that you could quite easily do yourself and enjoy. You know, the benefits are there. And that's the reason why many people want to draw and always ask the question, why, why can't I draw? And, uh, and I can tell you that, uh, let me go to my Quora here. Let's uh, go to the Quora channel here. Let me, actually, let me go to the Quora here. Quora, Paintology, Quora. Yeah, there it is. <clears throat> so if you go here, you will see there's many drawings that you can find and postings that I make regularly. And then you've already seen that. Here's one that I really enjoyed drawing it's the finger painting mm, okay. I was hoping to expand that image but anyway there's finger painting of a landscape the cat there's Ed Sheeran bananas clouds you name it apple here if you draw an apple a dog using the block coloring drawing with your fingers so there's plenty for you to immerse yourself. And if you're beginning, just practice with the fun tutorials you'll find. Don't try and, you know, don't try and shoot for the stars. Try and work your way slowly up, developing the skill. Remember, I've got a lot more experience than you have. And my intention is not to show off what I can do. My intention is entirely to make sure... To, to allow you to be able to draw, yeah? And let's see, the Cora, to allow you to be able to get into drawing. 
so there you are and i hope you've enjoyed this uh, session and i uh, look forward to producing another session and by all means post in the community not community sorry post in the comments section if you have anything interesting that you want to learn more about and i'm very happy to look at them read them and and answer your responses to this to paintology any questions you have uh, any anything that you want to ask or if you have a subject you really like me to draw then uh, yeah please put it in the comments and i'll be happy to answer them so hopefully see you in another session i usually alternate between paintology and the produced channel so if you don't see me in one day in the live channel here in paintology you can always hop onto the Fedus channel f-e-r-d-o-u-s-c channel right let me show you go back to youtube here and then you'll see that i'm on the paintology channel and then we can do the Fedus channel oops well here someone's pinched my name here produce music is my channel there produce can you see it there that's my other channel and the paintology is this channel so excellent let me see so thank you for watching and hope to see you again soon bye bye